Okay, in this video I'm going to continue on with my tutorials on vector calculus for electromagnetism. This is video number 5 and I'm going to discuss the separation vector. I'd like to draw your attention to my website universityphysicstories.com also. So, this really isn't vector calculus as such. It's just something I would be referring to all the time or continually during my tutorials on electrostatics and electrodynamics. So, for that reason I'm going to put it in here at the start or kind of the uh, the, the introductory information to the to that particular set of videos. So in electrodynamics or electromagnetism you may or may not know at this stage that we usually talk about charges, okay? Well of course you know that, but we talk about source and test charges. So I'm gonna call for my all my videos I'm gonna give small q as a source a source charge. That is my definition of a source charge. A small q that is my notation. And if you ever see a large q we're talking about a test charge. So, so a test charge, of course, is going to be my, we'll say, detector, D-E-T-E-C-T-O-R. So any time we're talking about a test charge or the place that the test ch charge should be, we're going to talk about um, the detector. So what we do is we have, we like to describe things using vectors. So we describe the, the vector which goes from the origin to the source charge as R prime, and the vector which goes from the origin to the test charge as R. Okay, they're both vectors. Now, why do we say prime? So you should know from now on that any time a variable is primed, it, 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 uh, associ it's associated with a source of some form, and that's very important. So uh, I'll talk about that now more. So let's plot, we'll say, uh, a single source and a single test charge. So here is my Cartesian my, let's say my Cartesian plane, here's the x-axis and here's the y-axis. So let's place, for argument's sake, a source charge of, let's say, Q, a value of Q here. So this is my source. And I'm going to place a test charge, capital Q, over here. So I said the vector which goes from the origin to my source, excuse me, the origin to my detector or the origin to my test is the R vector. And the vector which goes from my origin to my source is the R prime vector. Why is it primed? Well, because Q is my source. Anything that's associated with sources, you give a prime. And that, that is the notation I shall use. But if you look at this, let's say if I draw it over here, there's R. So if I add R and then go, uh, if I add, there's R and then R, uh, if I take away R prime, so I'll do this. I'm going to get a vector that does that. Okay? And if you notice, what well, in actual fact, that new vector that I've drawn is this one here. So this is R minus R prime. This is R minus R prime. And by the way, you in video number four, you've seen the law of cosines, and you know we can apply the law of cosines here if you like. But we don't do that yet. We, well, sometimes we do it, but I'm not, that's not what I'm here to do. I'm here to define this particular uh, that particular vector is the separation vector. What does this? What does it separate? Well, it separates the sources and your detector or your test. All right, so that is called a separation vector. It points from your source to your detector, and that's very important. And uh, you, I, I can guarantee you that if you're, uh, let's say, if you're doing this is just video tutorial, video tutorials, you will constantly be referring back to this video. Or if you have a book with you, you'll be constantly referring back to the page in the book that defines the separation vector. Just you can trust me on that one. So what you need to remember, primed variables are for, are for sources. Unprimed variables are for your detector or for test charges. And we talk about R minus R prime. If you remember, the, the prime comes last, R minus R prime. You always know that it goes from the, the source to the test, so you know that the, the prime is for your source. Okay? Now, um, I'm following the notation by David Griffiths in his book, Introduction to Electrodynamics. Uh, I think it's a great book. So he defines the separation vector as follows, R minus R prime. Now, this is, this is supposed to be some, some form of an R. I don't know what letter that is, so I'm going to call it, believe it or believe not, in a very scientific or very proper manner, I'm going to call it squiggle. All right? And... You know, I, th I think, uh, yeah, I'm definitely going to go with this. However, if anybody watching this video can tell me what, what letter that's supposed to be, you know, off you go. I just think it's supposed to be a fancy R. 
How do I draw it? I don't know really. It's like something like that. I'm not really sure. <laughs> so I, I sometimes get a bit of a laugh out of it because I'm sad. But anyway, uh, this uh, we come to call this our separation vector. So separation vector or minus r prime. Immediately you know uh, it goes from the source to the test. So you immediately associate primed variables. Primed variables are associated with the sources. And I can uh, mark my words. You will forget. You will forget which is switch, and you have to keep referring back. So the separation vector squiggle is r minus r prime. Okay, and one last thing to say that sometimes we will be uh, no, not sometimes we will often be integrating and differentiating our functions. So let's say in general we might have some form of a derivative. We'll be using the uh, the nabla operator. So let's say we're going to take the gradient of our function. Well, what's the difference then between this? Well, this means the gradient of a function means del del x, del del y, del del z. Okay, um, and in actual fact, I'm just trying to think here now which video I discussed the Nabla operator in. It is it's actually discussed in the next video, video six. But uh, so if you don't understand what this is, you can look at that. But we'll say the Nabla prime is going to be del del x prime, del del y prime, del del z prime. What's the difference? Well, these are with respect to the prime variables or the sources. And these are, excuse me, the sources, and this is with respect to the detector. So there is a difference between the prime variables and the unprimed variables. And finally, you'll be doing integrals believe it or believe it not and often you're going to be getting you might get dx prime or you might simply just get the integral over dx and of course there's going to be a difference because you're integrating over a different vector you're going to be integrating either over the primed vector or the unprimed vector so it's very important and the most common example the, the most common example to do is to calculate the total charge so say if you've taught you you have lots of little uh, source charges separated here there might be q1 that might be q2 or whatever but each of those, because they're sources, they're all going to have their different R primes. So you, you might, this might be R1 prime, this might be R2 prime, this might be R3 prime. And you want to calculate the total, the total charge. Well, what you're going to do is you're going to integrate. You're going, you're going to integrate your function, but you're going to be integrating it over the uh, dr prime, so all, all, all over the the primed variables. Because sometimes, for, for lots of reasons, you may have your own prime variables in there as well. So that's all I've got to say about that. Thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends. Subscribe to my channel. And you might also visit universityphysicstorials.com.